What's this? Terra Luna's dropped from $100 to a dollar? It can't possibly go any lower. What a perfect opportunity. <laughs> Holy smokes, everyone. What an absolute crazy 48 hours it has been in the markets. We have cryptocurrencies literally falling to zero, and this is going to be labeled cryptocurrency's first major Lehman moment. And what this is leading many investors to fear, that this could lead to broader contagion in the cryptocurrency market. And remember, cryptocurrency, it did get a market cap all the way up there of nearly $3 trillion at the peak. So if cryptocurrency loses trillions and trillions of dollars of valuations, which it already has, this could lead to a broader sell-off and this could lead to broader pain in the global financial system as a whole. So what caused Terra to lose so much of its value? What caused UST, the stable coin, which is meant to be priced at a dollar and never fall below a dollar, become de-pegged from its dollar valuation, falling to a low of around 15 cents? And could much larger, more important stable coins like Tether and USDC be next? Well, that's exactly what I'm going to cover in today's video. And I'm also going to go over Coinbase be at risk of bankruptcy. Will Michael Saylor get a margin call? And what can we learn from cryptocurrency's last bull market to see where the bottom could be here? Or could we be facing a prolonged recession, even depression, and a cryptocurrency winter that lasts much longer than the previous ones? Well, everyone, let's not waste any time. Let's get into the news, the facts, and the data. Well, everyone, I'm sure you've heard this story. Cryptocurrency Luna crashes to zero as UST falls further from its dollar peg, and Bitcoin is having a rebound, but will it last? Now, for those of you that don't know, Terra was one of the major cryptocurrencies in the top 10. It had a market cap in the multiple billions, and UST was a stablecoin. And for those who don't know what stablecoins are, they're pretty much a coin that's meant to be stable and not lose its value. So what a lot of cryptocurrency investors do uh, when they expect cryptocurrency to fall is they sell their cryptocurrency and they convert them into stablecoins, and they can even earn interest on those stablecoins by staking them or lending them. Now, UST had a market capitalization also in the tens of billions, and a lot of investors parked their money in there thinking it was a safe haven. So if cryptocurrency would fall, they wouldn't lose their valuation. Their $10,000 that was invested in USD would stay at $10,000. But Terra Luna stablecoin UST is different to other stablecoins. It's not backed one for one for dollar, or it's not backed by corporate bonds, uh, bonds, US treasuries. It's not backed by assets. It's an algorithmic stablecoin. And so if you're wanting a simple explanation on how this stable coin lost its dollar valuation, how it went to 15 cents on the dollar, and how Terra Luna became worthless, is what happened is something called a death spiral. I'll put up a simple chart here of the death spiral. We can see here, step one, Luna loses its value. There's a bank run on UST, the stable coin. So more Luna is minted. Then more Luna minted, this is more supply, then the price of Luna falls. And then there's more run on UST as fears mount. And this cycle repeats and repeats until it becomes worthless, which is just what happened. And this is what it's led to. Look at this, more than 200 billion erased from entire crypto market in a day as sell-off intensifies. So we can see here, people, the price of Bitcoin did plunge below 26,000 on Thursday, hitting its lowest level in 16 months. And people, what I've been warning about, I've been warning the past six months since Bitcoin crashed from its all-time high in November that we are going to be facing crypto winter. That, according to the four-year cycle, the bull run was over, and we're now going to face a 12 to 18 month bear market. And I said my price target for Bitcoin to fall to before I start buying in was 25,000. And guess what? We just hit that yesterday. And I did buy a little bit of uh, Bitcoin yesterday. And I did, like I said in my previous video, I bought some at 30,000. But I would not be surprised if it falls to 20,000. And again, people, I just want to reiterate because what I think happens on YouTube is, for example, if they say they're buying a little bit of Bitcoin, then you, the viewer, may think, well, if they're buying a little bit, maybe I should put all my money in Bitcoin. No, 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 people, this is not financial advice. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. I'm only putting in a little amounts. I'm only starting to dollar cost average in less than 10% of my portfolio. And I'll get into later in the video why Bitcoin could still possibly fall much, much lower. And that's why I'm holding the majority of my cash on the sideline to hopefully get some even bigger discounts. 
but I could be wrong, and that's why I'm hedging my bets by buying a little bit now when we still are getting great discounts of 60% plus. So Ether, the second biggest digital currency, tanked below 2,000 as well, and the collapse of stablecoin Terra USD has led to fears of broader market contagion. So that brings me to my next point in the video, people. Could this be crypto's Lehman moment, and could this lead to broader market dysfunction, especially if we see Tether fall, because Tether is much bigger than UST, and if Tether falls, and you know, there's been a lot of rumors that Tether's not really backed, there's been rumors that they have high risk corporate bond debt that is not very liquid. So if we see Tether go down, we will see Bitcoin's price collapse much, much lower. Because look at this, everyone. Stablecoin Terra and Tether de-pegged from the dollar, leaving analysts wondering if this marks a Lehman moment for crypto. Because what happened yesterday when Terra Luna's stablecoin collapsed to about 14 or 15 cents on the dollar, we saw Tether fall to 94 cents on the dollar. Now, this has happened before for Tether, so it's really not a big fear now, but if it does fall below 90 cents on the dollar, then we should start being very, very worried. Listen to this. The collapse of the cryptocurrency stablecoin Terra USD, also known as UST, is invoking fearful comparisons to the 2008 financial crisis, as some analysts wonder whether the entire crypto ecosystem could be at risk of imploding. And if people do lose faith in cryptocurrency as a whole, we will see a much, much bigger downturn. Now, how this could happen is people could lose faith in all stablecoins and they could start liquidating and this could cause fear or people start to lose faith in other projects and they start to sell off everything. There's obviously not going to be enough liquidity and this is going to make this crash that we've just seen look like child's play. And we'll see many other projects go to zero. So the slip in USDT tether is more worrying than the collapse of stablecoin peer UST because the USDT dollar peg is supposedly backed by real world financial assets. Its stumble could have repercussions for traditional markets as well as the crypto's fear. And that's because like I was talking about people, they are backed by corporate bonds. If the one to one pegs on the US dollar backed instead of the algorithmic unstable coins crack, things are going to get ugly fast and may lead to cross margin selling in other assets classes. And here's what some analysts are starting to warn. The collapse of Tether Peg will take down a large chunk of the crypto ecosystem, given how central Tether became to crypto flows. And Dogecoin founder Billy Marcus was more, I guess you could say, straight up about the potential ramifications of Tether, de-pegging, as he noted on Twitter, if Tether dies, it's all over, friends. Again, people, I'm not saying this is going to happen. I'm not just trying to spread unnecessary fear FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. I'm just trying to warn you what could possibly happen so you don't go all in right now thinking that things can't possibly fall lower, just like how people brought terror thinking it was a bargain at a dollar for it to collapse another 99% in a day. So okay, Terra has crashed to zero. We've got the fear of what could happen to Tether, but people, there are even bigger risk on the horizon. Look at this, Coinbase let users know what a bankruptcy could mean for their cryptocurrency. So CEO Brian Armstrong said Coinbase isn't headed for insolvency, but the company says customers' money might get tied up if it does. This is very worrying people because even in Coinbase it doesn't go bankrupt, just the fact that they are speaking about possible bankruptcy or bringing up the B word at all is concerning. So Coinbase Global Inc, like the rest of the cryptocurrency market, is having a really tough week. Not filing for bankruptcy bad, but the biggest US crypto exchange did just mention the B word in a regulatory filing, giving its customers a painful reminder of how bad things could get if Coinbase ever does get seriously distressed. And I know a lot of my viewers are doing invest in cryptocurrency would probably be using Coinbase, so you need to listen to this now. In its quarterly report, Coinbase added a risk disclosure. If the company were to file for bankruptcy, the court might treat customer assets that the exchange is custodian for, their Bitcoin, Dogecoin or whatever, as Coinbase assets and they'd be at the back of the line for repayment, forcing normal people unaccustomed to the ins and outs of the federal bankruptcy court to call back their money along with everybody else owed money by the exchange. Do you hear that, people? If Coinbase does go bankrupt, you trying to get your money back, you're going to be at the back of the queue. And look at how much money is at risk. It's a huge amount at stake. Coinbase was custodian for $256 billion of custom money on March 31st. And of course, the CEO is going to tweet this. There is some noise about a disclosure we made. 
in our 10Q today about how we could hold crypto assets. Your funds are safe at Coinbase, just as they've always been. Again, people, he's a CEO of Coinbase. Of course, he's going to say there's nothing to fear here. So here's exactly what would happen to your cryptocurrency if they do go bust, according to an expert. So Leverton wrote the insolvency proceedings would probably prevent customers from selling or exchanging their coins because of the so-called automatic stay imposed on creditors. US courts have not dealt yet with the bankruptcy of a crypto exchange, and there are a bevy of open legal and regulatory questions. One thing is clear enough. Though, if Coinbase users were to become so-called general unsecured creditors and the company's disclosure says, they'd likely have an unpleasant time. In general, unsecured creditors are the last to recover money ahead of them would be senior debt holders and Coinbase has $2 billion of senior unsecured bonds outstanding along with the lawyers and bankers that help any company navigate bankruptcy, racking up potentially huge bills along the way. And of course, this caused a lot of fear in the markets and this caused Coinbase uh, bonds to fall to 70 cents on the dollar. But unfortunately, people, it just gets worse. Let me tell you what would be the biggest risk for cryptocurrency right now. Now, look, there is some fears and there's some rumor that Bitcoin whale Michael Saylor may get a margin call. Now, a lot of people were saying that if Bitcoin fell to 21,000, he would get a margin call. People, this is not true. And we'll get into how it's actually much, much lower. But... If cryptocurrency does keep falling, investors and creditors may start to put some pressure on him to start selling. So Michael Saylor did tweet that MicroStrategy has a 205 million term loan and needs to maintain 410 million as collateral. And MicroStrategy has 115,000 BTC that it can pledge if the price of BT falls below 3,562. The company could post other collateral. So again, people don't think it's likely he will get margin called if Bitcoin falls below 20,000. But if it does fall even lower and if he does start to get some pressure on investors or his company starts to face uh, some financial difficulty, he may have to sell some to raise some more capital. And with him owning 115,000 Bitcoin, when there is such a liquidity crisis going on right now, that could cause the price to crash very, very quickly. So even though Bitcoin has crashed very, very hard, it did hit my price target of 25,000 and it has rebounded to 30,000. There still is some big risks in the market right now. And we also have to learn from history from the last bull market to see how low things could go. Let's hit the charts. So, okay, let's go to Bitcoin's price history. Now, the last bull market we saw was in 2017 and it peaked around December 2017 at around $20,000. How long did it take to fall to the bottom? Well, we can see here on the chart here, it didn't bottom until December 2018, a year later, where it fell to around $3,000. So again, people, that was a decline of around 80% and it took a year to bottom. We peaked in November 2021, so we could just be halfway through this bear market and Bitcoin could possibly fall if it does fall 80% like it did during the previous uh, bull run. Again, no two bull runs are the same, but if it does, then that means Bitcoin could fall all the way to 14,000, 15,000 or even 13,000. Now, the biggest risk and uncertainty for crypto is, is remember, Bitcoin became mainstream around 2013. And what has happened since 2013? Well, we've been on this massive, crazy bull run in the stock market, in the housing market. All assets, all boats have been lifted during this crazy bull run. But what cryptocurrency hasn't gone through is a deep recession, and not just a deep recession like we had in 2020. That wasn't a real recession. That was more an artificial recession. It was a short and sharp recession. But we haven't seen how cryptocurrency would perform during a pluralong recession or even a depression. Because yes, it did bounce back in 2020. But remember, that was a V-shaped recovery. They printed trillions and trillions of dollars. They dropped interest rates to zero. But we haven't seen how cryptocurrency performs during a time of interest rates going up through the roof and central banks selling off their balance sheet instead of expanding their balance sheet. So I think this is going to be the biggest test for cryptocurrency. And do I think it will survive? Yes, but that doesn't mean prices can't go much, much lower and stay there for a prolonged period of time if we don't recover from this recession. So, okay, I know what you're thinking. What does all this investment jargon mean for you in simple terms? What this means is, even though we have had a short recovery in cryptocurrency, there still are huge, huge risks. 
Yes, I have started to dollar cost average in, but I would not be surprised if we fall below 20,000. And if we had the same decline of the last bull market, Bitcoin could possibly fall below $15,000. And again, we haven't seen how Bitcoin performs during a prolonged recession. So people, this is going to be its biggest test yet, and you may not want to start going all in yet. You may want to start hoarding cash and wait for some real life-changing opportunities to come. And this bear market may keep going for another six to 12 months. But everyone, that's just my humble thoughts and opinions anything could happen what do you think let me know now for all my law viewers and subscribers still watching you're awesome thanks for watching i'll see you all in the next video